what's one game because I know like from from experience when I played with the Eagles and when I played with the Patriots and we played each other um, I'd listen to just how much they were talking about what's one game where you were like Jesus this whole this whole game plan it's like I'm getting slide pro chip yeah. they keep a back back there I've seen people do things in protection for you yeah like is there one that you're like this isn't even the Patriots um, the Eagles um, the Saints, even the Bears had a nice little game plan. So I feel like it depends, man. You get a, get a lot of attention, but some teams give you a little bit more than what you expect. Yeah. You know? And it's a, it should free, free up other guys, but they make sure that your game plan is that whatever they do, I'm going to let this guy take mm -hmm. a chance. I'm going to give him a chance to get this one-on-one, -on -one, but we're going to take him out the game. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. It gets frustrating after a while, but it, it comes with, come with the territory. And, you, and you're already, like, listen, for – for people who don't know and who haven't played with you, they should know by watching, you're a violent player. And I mean that as a, as a compliment. Like to me, it's one thing to set your mind to being violent, <laughs> but to be able to go out and athletically do it too. Like there'd be games where I'd be like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go kill somebody yeah. in this game. I'm gonna go fucking destroy somebody. And then I get out there and try to run, and I'm like, God damn, I'm 33 years old. <laughs> Has the tort all kicked in yet? So you have the mentality, you have the ability, where, where's your mind the night before a game, the morning of a game? Are you anxious? Are you are you angry? Are you relaxed? What are you? The night before the game, I'm relaxed. But be, been, before I used to have, you know, get them jitters and like you keep thinking about the game. Like mm -hmm. I want to, I just you just more nervous because you want to do good. You know, I, I'm never nervous, nervous or something. I just nervous that I just I want to do my job and I want to do it good. You know, so in the mornings I usually, usually just wake up, FaceTime my kids, talk to my kids. You know, hang up, take a shower, be in a shower about 30 minutes, talking mm -hmm. to myself, get myself amped up, just talking about what I'm gonna do. So I'm, I'm real weird like that. I talk to myself a lot to try to, you know, motivate myself and, and just, you know, tell myself what I gotta do. What's the first thing you say to yourself when you wake up on a Sunday? Do you say game day, game, game day? Game day, game day, and I jump, and I promise you, and I'm jumping <laughs> up, smacking my chest, and I'm, and I'm like, well, I'm just, you think about it, I'm weird. So of course the, the, the story for people who don't know is we, we shared a, a coach who had impact on both of our careers yeah. uh mike waffle who we used to butt heads with <laughs> all the time you know me and mike we used to fucking you remember yeah. it was like we you, some days you'd be like they hate each other yeah. but i love the guy and he taught me a lot but one thing he used to always say was when you wake up on sunday your game day game, game day, day game yeah, day it's the game first day, thing that yeah. should come out of your mouth and you really do it yeah i do it hi chris and aaron i woke up for 41 years on saturdays and sundays and first thing that went off in my head was game day game day game day what else did you learn from Waff? um i learned a lot you know i, I always tell people this story like when i my, when i got there as a rookie <clears throat> you know i was in there watching film one day he came in caught me watching film and he came he was writing stuff on the board he was just talking to me he, he said yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be coaching i'm gonna be saying a lot of things in this meeting room i'm a rookie i ain't played not one game I, we, we in otas right now I'm, I'm going to be saying a lot of things in this meeting room. I don't want you to listen to nothing I say. And I stopped watching film. I said, huh? He said, I just want to learn you. I just want to watch you play. Mm -hmm. I want to learn from you. So for me, as a, as a young guy that never played one snap, for you to hear your defensive line coach pretty much giving you freedom right away to just go out there and play, I feel like that was, that was what made me feel much more comfortable, just like, shh. Yeah. You're like, I ain't got to try. I'm going to just do me. Yeah. I'm going to just do me. And if I mess up something, that he just said, if I mess up, it's on me. Just play. Well, the way we played was attacking. Everything was you do things three yards in the backfield. And if you get three yards in the backfield and you beat, you beat somebody to a spot, yeah, exactly. you know, to each his own. And, and, and that's a big part of it is like, and I see you at the camps and we talked about this is you love the, you love the technique. You love mm -hmm. the art form. I could see you coaching. You'll have way too much money to want to deal with that bullshit when you're done. But <laughs> I could see you coaching, and, and, and that's, a, that's a compliment because I could see you really passing that passion on to younger players. But one thing a lot of coaches forget is every player is not made the same. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of coaches get these techniques that they want to push on players. Like if they told me, hey, go, go watch Julius Pepper's tape. I'm like, what the fuck am yeah. I going to do with that? I love, I, I'll enjoy it, but there's nothing I can take from it. So giving you that freedom, you know, which moves work for you? Everybody in that in that group we had was different. Yeah, you know what I mean. 
from a technique, from a physical standpoint. One thing standpoint. I got down was that he, what well, Wolf taught me was the chop club. Yep. And I used to do the, you know, Rob Quinn did that chop yep. club all but the time. But I couldn't do it to save my life. Yeah, and I and that's when I, I start watching film on, on Rob a lot, do his chop. That's why I got the jump chop now. I, I took that from Rob. Yeah. Just studying his film over the years and I, I got it. But just studying, it's just, for me, Learning a pass rush moves is just repetition. You mm -hmm. know, you got to like always, like how coaches always say, slow to fast, fast becomes, becomes smooth. Smooth, becomes, yeah. smooth becomes whatever. Yeah, but that, it's really like that though. That's yeah. honest. You, you walk through stuff and then that's when you, in practice, you're trying to work it. It might yeah. not, it's going to be, it's not going to be the right way. You just got to keep doing it, keep working and keep practicing it. And don't be afraid to fail. And, and don't be afraid and to fail. And that's the hardest it. part in the D-line, O-line culture right now. Cause you, you turn on the, the internet, you turn on the internet, it's on old as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you log on to Twitter. Yeah and you see videos of camp culture and like the one-on-ones, yeah. everything's one-on-ones. And when you get into one-on-ones, some players who don't have clout are afraid to try things. Because mm -hmm. if you get embarrassed- They're afraid to lose. You're afraid to lose. You, it, but it's, it's, you go, you're not gonna win every pass rush move, no. but, if, but as long as you win more than what you lose, you just gotta trust your moves. You gotta right. trust the process. You gotta just trust what you're doing is gonna work. That's all More coaches is. need to free. Would you say that more coaches need to free their younger players up to do what what suits them? Uh, yeah, but everybody's different. I feel like they should give them freedom to, to see what, what what their strengths is and their weaknesses and and, yeah. and, and work from there. Because like you said, a lot of like you can't teach a lot of guys the same moves. Everybody ain't got the chop club. No. Everybody ain't got the swipes. Everybody ain't got the same power power I moves and stuff so like that. I stupid trying the chop club. But, but every now and again, you hit it. And you yeah, you it. hit it. That's, listen, you, that's you, a you, move. I, you hit some chop club. Yeah, I've seen you hit some listen, chops before. Yes, I have. See, it, see it, but you, you just the viewers it. out there, I still got it. I used to say. <laughs> so, so is there a move that when you hit that move that you feel like, you know, that was sweet? Like, you know what I mean? Is it the chop club? Is it a spin? Like, what is it for you? For me, hump? It, it's, it, it's a little bit of everything. But I like, I like the chop. The chop is the chop club is. I feel like that's the that's the that's the speed rush. That's the rush that's bang bang clean, and you gonna get free. But as a defensive tackle, to get that quarterback when he's not looking, you know. Right. Chop club, beautiful move when it's executed, chopping down on a low hand and getting the back shoulder to get by the offensive lineman, or you can just drop them on their face because they're leaning so hard because they're afraid of the bull rush. That's what Aaron Donald does. I've seen guys like Jared McCoy hit it. I've seen guys like Robert Quinn hit it with regularity, but nobody hit it with more regularity. Uh, than the technician, one of my favorite players, OCU Manura. What's going on, Chris? Your man, OC, and we're going to talk today about the Chop Club. But it's not just the Chop Club, it is the Freeze Chop Club. The Freeze is very, very important. If you just Chop Club, the guy's just going to push you on by the quarterback, and that's no good. But if you do the Freeze, what this does is it gets the offensive lineman to stop his feet for a millisecond, and that gives us, the premier athletes that we are, the chance to come around the edge. So you come up the field, you step inside, and as soon as you step inside, most of the time, the offensive lineman is going to be bracing for a bull rush or an inside move, so he's going to stop his feet, and then you come over the top with your left hand and pull yourself through with the right hand. But it's not a one-two. It's almost a simultaneous move. It's a one-two. And as soon as you do the one-two, the chop club, you got to turn your shoulders to the quarterback. If you don't do that, you're going to go up the field. So you come in, you step in, chop club, and you're on your way to the quarterback, man. Best move in all of football. Most people aren't using this anymore, man, but you guys know all about that, don't you? When I came in the league, everybody was a puncher, right? Yeah. I don't know if you noticed this, and I don't know what they're doing down a guard anymore, but a lot of guys went to low hand, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that was the answer to low hand. And a lot of times now they're pulling, they're pulling their punches, yeah, that's, right? That's what a lot of, they, I feel like a lot of the O-line coaches just teach them that, to not to get your hands, to so get how do, right So how do, you, how do you defeat that? So if you're doing a chop and he pull, you just gotta, it's, it's more of a, now you go to your counter move, whatever your counter is. Sometimes it's power, power on the power, power pop, what Waffle would have said. And, so. and, and I think, yeah, power pop, apex. Yeah, see, but, but that them was real move that if you think about it, it's all about getting to the back of the shoulder pad. Get to the back. And once you get to the back, you, you beat the offensive lineman all day. And I see you do this stuff all the time and I'm like, I wonder if he's thinking about what Waff told him, a little bit of everything. And I, and I still, honestly, I still go to Waff's house, and he and Waff would tell me like, you need to do some more of this. He really, yeah. he still coached me, and I, yeah. and I and I really, I still listen to yeah. him, and he, I still go visit him, and he tell me what he think I should do, and I go to practice, and I, and I practice that. So. But it is, but it is, most rushers, they plan things too much. I don't know about you, I would get in a game, and I'd have a loose plan. Yeah. But you got to be ready to hit the curveball because you might watch a guy on, on film and think you can you can bowl him super easy, but he's got a better anchor exactly. than you think. You're right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or um, you, you got a guy you're like, oh, I seen all these slow guys get his edge, but I can't get it for yeah. some reason. You have to have curveballs. And another thing is within a play, 
you need to have that second move loaded in the chamber. Mm -hmm. And you do that really well, the sack against the Lions. Yeah. You're ready for the second guy in slide pro. You're ready for, you miss with the chop, you're going to power. Yeah. You know, is, what's your prep process in the week? What I, what I learned from just, well, I study the guy. So if I'm studying the guy, obviously, like you just said, you, know, you might see a guy that's doing low hand all through family. You're like, I'm going to do this chop club all game. And then you play on and now he's a puncher. So a guy, they, they switch up sets and things like that, but it, it's going to come to a point in the game, they're going to go back to what they know. Mm -hmm. And that's, then that's, that's when you start seeing that low hand a lot. Or, Especially when you put that helmet in there. You know, and then you switch it up chance. on them too. So it's, it's, for me, pass rushing ain't nothing but counter moves. It's, it's a counter on the counter on the counter. Mm -hmm. so, so if I go chop club, I might hit him that first chop club, then he's trying to pull that hand back. But, but him, push, and him swinging that outside hand back and pulling it back, what he's doing, he's giving me the edge. Mm -hmm. So I, I might miss it. I might just go to a rip and beat mm -hmm. you on the edge from just you giving which, up the edge. Which us again. tall guys can't, so I didn't have that. So it, it just, for me, pass rush moves ain't nothing but counter. It's just, yeah. you know, you, you have a plan, you know, for a third and long. A, a, when you, a, a down, you got to go get it. And sometimes it's just, you know, you're going to work power and, and work off that. So yeah. it's just counter moves. Thanks for watching part four of the AD Fishbowl interview. I know it's been a lot of fun doing this interview. Hopefully you're enjoying watching it. Part five is going to be a lot more introspective. He's going to talk about how he blames himself for the Super Bowl a little bit, whether you think that's right or wrong, uh, and also what can he possibly do to get even better, which is scary. So part five, uh, depending on what team you root for, could be pretty, pretty frightening. Please subscribe to our channel and uh, check it out.